Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Hobo here today and today we are back with another round of predictions. This time it's for week number two in the NFL. Week one was a little all over the place, if I'm being honest. Um, and if you notice, my voice sounds a little bit strained. That's because I almost completely lost it last Sunday when I was in MetLife Stadium cheering on the Giants in a heartbreaking loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars. However, we are here tonight to break down week two in the NFL and we're going to start with Thursday, September 13th, 2018, 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time, NFL Network. We have the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. So the Ravens just came off a thorough thrashing of the Buffalo Bills, uh, to say the least, and the Bengals really survived the Indianapolis Colts, um, survived being the operative word because they didn't really win that game handily, even though the score might uh, indicate otherwise. But I feel like the Ravens, the way they played last week was a bit of a fluke. Uh, you know, in intense rain, they played a team that's still struggling mightily at quarterback, uh, which the Bengals, I don't believe, are. I think the Bengals are a tenfold better team than the Buffalo Bills. And this game's going to be close. All division games really are. I'm just praying that we get a Thursday night football game that's not garbage like the last game that we had <laughs> last week, what I meant to say, on Thursday night football, because that game sucked all around. It was terrible. But, uh, you know, I, I after kind of reviewing all of the, the game tape, I really like what I've seen out of both teams. And I, I do, like I said, think the Ravens win was a bit of a fluke. So I'm going to take the Bengals in this game just because I think that they, you know, coming off a, a tight win, they probably have a little bit uh, a little bit more momentum going for them than a team that blew out a, a really bad team. So I'm going to go with the Bengals after that really convoluted sort of explanation. Then on Sunday, September 16th, we're going to kick off 1 p.m., on Fox with the Carolina Panthers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons, of course, participating in that aforementioned terrible Thursday night football game last week. And I think uh, that the Falcons' red zone problems will persist. And I think that their defense, uh, because it is missing some starters now, getting hurt really bad. Uh, they're, they're losing a lot of key players along that defense. But the Panthers... Didn't look particularly exciting facing a bad Cowboy team. And uh, this game, I think, is going to be a pretty close one. But I'm going to I'm gonna lean the favor of the Carolina Panthers just because they did win. And they don't look like a team that has very many glaring flaws, I guess you could say. Like the Falcons have two glaring flaws that I've already pointed out. Their defense and their red zone offense persist. Their red zone offense proficiency there we go that's the word I was looking for uh, it took me a minute to find it but yeah I'm gonna go with the Panthers in this game it's gonna be it's gonna be a close one it might get out of hand once a team gets the upper hand but uh, I think the Panthers will, will take care of business on the road next on CBS we have the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Washington Redskins and what a pleasant surprise it was to see Adrian Peterson AD all day back running all over the Arizona Cardinals. So I thought we are going to have a pretty mighty defense, but not to be. The Redskins offense looked pretty good. Looked pretty good. The defense played well, but on the other side, I hate the, Indi the Indianapolis Colts. I think they're vastly overrated. I don't think that there's a good player on that team. I honest to God don't. I think that they are a talentless waste of an NFL roster spot, and I think Andrew Luck is the crux of that. I think that he's the best magician in the entire NFL. He can trick everybody into thinking he's a good quarterback when he's really nothing more than a bottom five, barrel, bottom of the barrel, worse than everybody in the league type of quarterback. And I think it'll show this week when the Redskins pick up the all-important W against the Colts and advance to 2-0. God, I hate to say that. Next up on CBS, we have the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Deshaun Watson didn't really kick it into... Deshaun Watson mode last week against the Patriots, but what are you going to do against that that team when I mean, they've got a whole offseason to prepare for you in week one? And then there's the Titans who they were kind of, they were so screwed last week playing a seven-hour long football game, two two-hour rain delays, 
feel terrible for them. However, the Texans, I think, will have a great rebound game, and I think that they will beat the uh, the Tennessee Titans, and it's all going to be on Deshaun Watson's shoulder. And if, if he can hold up and he can keep up and that offensive line can block for any modicum of time, then I feel like Deshaun Watson's got a good chance to lead his Texans to a victory, and I'm going to count on that when I pick them for this game. Next up on Fox, Eagles, Buccaneers. This one, you know, after looking at the last or after looking at the games last week, you might think, "Oh, it's a no-brainer. You got to pick the Buccaneers. They drop millions of points on the New Orleans Saints, who are supposed to have a really good defense with a backup quarterback." But I, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is the most up-and-down quarterback there is. Uh, he's not a starter, clearly, because if he was. Um, Jameis Winston would be number two on the depth chart, but he's not. And the Eagles are the Super Bowl champions. Their defense is something that last week got a little bit tested, but I don't think that they're going to have a terrible performance. I think that the offense will kind of settle itself in a little bit. I still don't think Nick Foles will have a great game, but I'm going to take the Eagles in this game because I feel like the Buccaneers were kind of that that one shot on a on an opening day and then you'll kind of never hear about them again for the rest of the season type of deal so i'm going to pick the eagles in this game and they're going to go to 2-0 god what is it about the nfc east why do i keep picking them <laughs> then on cbs it's the chiefs it's the steelers everybody on social media thinks the steelers are going to walk all over the chiefs because they own the chiefs however different quarterback patrick mahomes proved last week why he is a superior quarterback to Alex Smith in that offense. And to me, I don't think this game will be close. The Steelers the Steelers are so interesting because it seems like their entire team is Le'Veon Bell when it's not. Everybody has a great point when they say that Le'Veon Bell is nothing without that good offensive line, and he's not. If you throw him behind the Giants' offensive line, he won't do anything. All running backs have to have some sort of run blocking to be great it's a fact and Le'Veon Bell is immensely protected by the fact that his quarterback has a number one receiver to throw to so the defense can't commit to either they can't commit to the run or to the pass too often without getting burned by one or the other so Le'Veon Bell is vastly overrated the Steelers are vastly overrated and I think the Chiefs are going to exploit them this Sunday and they're going to they're going to come away with a win in Heinz Field and the Steelers will fall to 0 1 and 1 and the Chiefs will go to 2 0. Next up CBS, it's Dolphins, it's Jets. Um I picked up the Jets defense on fantasy. If that doesn't tell you how much I like them going into this week 2 matchup, then I don't know what would other than the fact that the Dolphins <laughs> they're so weird, man. They're so weird. Like, I like Ryan Tannehill as a person and as an NFL quarterback. But I don't like his team. I really don't. And I don't think that he's going to be that type of quarterback that can have no team and still lead his team to the playoffs. So i gotta take, <laughs> I got to take the Jets in this game. They just look great on Monday night all around against a team in the Lions that I really, really liked going into uh, week one and into the season. And they completely throttled my expectations for <laughs> what I thought the Lions were going to be. So I'm going to pick the Jets in this game, and I think they're going to walk all over the Dolphins. Next up on CBS, it'll be the Chargers. It'll be the Bills. Bills look like absolute garbage on Sunday. They look like a joke, an absolute joke. And I know a lot of that is on Nathan Peterman. Almost all of it's on Nathan Peterman, if we're being honest. Uh, I don't blame the weather at all, because if you're a professional, you know how to play in the weather. And I think Nathan Peterman is trash, and I, sw I really hope he doesn't start this game. Because if he does, the Chargers defense is going to make him look worse than he looked last week against the Ravens. And I think the Chargers are going to go into Buffalo and walk away with a great, great victory. So that is my prediction, Chargers over Bills. Next, Vikings, Packers. I'm going to boil it down to this. If... Aaron Rodgers plays, the Packers have a fighting chance. If he doesn't, then A, my fantasy team is screwed, and B, I'm picking the Vikings. And since I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to play this game, I'm going to pick the Vikings. But let's preface this by saying 
If Aaron Rodgers plays, my official pick is the Packers. If Aaron Rodgers does not play, my official pick is the Vikings. So there we go. Next up on Fox, it's the Browns, it's the Saints. Saints defense looked bad last week. They looked really bad. They had a ton of points dropped on them by a backup quarterback. And the Browns are pretty much a team of backup quarterbacks. Because um, none of those guys are stars, let's be honest. Other than Miles Garrett, probably, and Denzel Ward, he looks like he's becoming a young star. None of those guys are really like, wow, look at that, he's a star. Um, they're all kind of guys who are under the radar. They're underdogs, chips on their shoulder type guys. And I'm going to pick them in this game, I think. The Browns go to 1-0-1 to start this season, be their best start probably ever. Um, that's false, but, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to take the Browns in this game. Over the Knoll and Saints, if I'm proved wrong, then I'm proved wrong. But I don't believe in the Saints this year the way I did last year. Next up, 405 on Fox. It's Lions. It's 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo will bounce back against this Lions defense. That looked terrible on Monday night. And the Lions, I think, will uh, will struggle under Matt Patricia's system. I Unless they can find a team that they can run the football against. And I don't think the 49ers are a team that they're going to be able to run the football against. And uh, until Matt Patricia gets the notion out of his head that he's got a 4,000-yard passer with a 5,000-yard season snuck in there for the past four or five years, then he has to switch up his scheme. He has to let uh, Matt Stafford air the ball out. He's got the same offensive coordinator, Jim Bob Cooter, and... If that offense doesn't gel, then I don't know what to tell you other than it's Matt Patricia's fault. Honest, honestly, I don't. I don't have any other explanation. And the 49ers, I think, will look good this year. I think they'll probably finish 8-8 eight and eight at, at best. But uh, I'm going to take them in this game, and they'll go to 1-1 one and one on the year. Next up at 405 on Fox, Arizona Cardinals, Los Angeles Rams. Rams look mighty impressive on Monday night. After fighting a stalemate with John Gruden's new look offense, they came out in that second half and completely took the game over. It was pretty, pretty damn impressive. Uh, very, very great job there by the Rams and Sean McVay for making those halftime adjustments, getting out there and winning a football game. But the Cardinals, they couldn't stop Adrian Peterson. That man is, what, over 30 years old now, I think? And, I mean, A.D. was pretty good in his prime, but I think he's a far cry from what he used to be. And I thought the Cardinals' defense was going to be mighty this year. But until they can get Sam Bradford out from under center, uh, I think they'll lose this game. So I'm going to take the Rams. Next up, excuse me, 425 on CBS. Patriots-Jaguars rematch of the AFC Championship game. Uh, the Jags didn't look impressive. I'm going to be honest, I watch it with my own eyes. I was there in the building. Their offense couldn't get anything going against a, a Giants defense, which I have no faith in, and I'm a Giants fan. Uh, and their defense didn't really look great either. It was just a lot of bad play by the New York Giants. And I feel like if the Giants offense had played better, then the Jaguars would have lost. That's simple. I don't think the Jaguars are the team they were last year. And I feel like, as they've been for the past 20 years... I feel like they'll be completely irrelevant. So I'm going to I'm gonna take the Patriots. And uh, I think the Jags come crashing down to earth. They might make the wild card, but I don't think that they're going to be the number two or three seed in the AFC. So I'm going to go with the New England Patriots. Next up, 425 CBS. Raiders, Broncos, Case Keenum. If he can cut back on those turnovers, man, that Broncos offense could be lethal. Lethal. And especially against a Raiders offense that can't generate a pass rush and that can't cover. They're not a good defense in Oakland. Uh, the offense, they're going to have to figure something out because Amari Cooper can't go out every week and have one catch for nine-yard games. Um, so the Raiders got to figure something out. They look good on Monday night in the first half, I think strictly because John Gruden had a lot of exotic plays uh, built into that offense to make them look a lot better than they are. But if Case can cut back on the turnovers... He had, what, three touchdowns, three picks last week against the Seahawks team, which I think is bad. Um, if he can clean, it, clean that up, excuse me, then I think that the Broncos will be a really good team this year. I think they'll be a team to, uh, to reckon with, rather, 
Sorry, I'm all over the place. It's just uh, my voice hurts. I'm kind of tired. I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, my mind's just not in the right place. But I know what I'm doing. I'm not under the influence of narcotics. Unlike what the Raiders were probably under when they traded away Khalil Mack, who on Sunday night looked like the best defensive player in the NFL. Let's just be honest. He earned every penny of that contract by destroying the Bears, or by destroying the Packers, rather, in the first half, I'm just going to say, because he didn't have an impact in the second half at all. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Broncos in this game. I think Case will cut back on the turnovers. Their offense is really good. Ram Raiders' defense is bad. It's just a bad unit. Um, so the Broncos, I think, are going to walk away probably with a two-score two score lead of victory. So, yeah, Broncos my official pick. 8.20 p.m. on NBC Sunday Night Football. My least favorite thing in the world to see. Sunday Night Football, NBC, Giants, Cowboys, Jerry World. Couldn't get any worse for me. Really couldn't. <laughs> um, and I love the Giants. They've been my team my whole life. I've gone to three games now. I'm one and two at those games. Two of them were tremendously rainy, and we got destroyed in one and had a heartbreaking loss in the other. And the other one I went to when we won was really, really cold. So I haven't had the best experience at Giants games, but if that doesn't prove that I'm a loyal fan, I don't know what does. Um, maybe the, the signed Saquon Barkley jersey on my wall in a frame, which I think I referenced last week. But uh, I've, I've had that thing since before he played his first game in the preseason, so... Yeah, I'm a pretty loyal guy there. But uh, the Giants and the Cowboys, Cowboys look utterly abysmal on Sunday afternoon. They look awful. They look terrible. And Landon Collins has a point. He said in an interview, I believe earlier today, that the key to beating the Cowboys is to put the ball in Dak Prescott's hands. And that's the truth because he's got nobody to throw to. And the Giants defense, I don't think it's going to be a bad unit. I don't think they're going to be terrible. I have my questions uh, because they're not the most sound-looking team, uh, sound-looking defense, rather, on paper. But they played a pretty good game against the Jaguars last week, and they were just in the AFC Championship game. So I like the Giants' chances in this game. If the offensive line can block a little bit better, <coughs> Eric Flowers, <coughs> if he cannot kick somebody after giving up an immediate pressure, um, literally kicked a man and got a tripping call. He lifted his leg and flung it at a man. He kicked him in midair because the fat bastard doesn't know how to play the offensive line. Uh, he doesn't know how to play football. Probably doesn't even know the rules or what is or is not a penalty. But uh, that'll be a conversation for another day. But if the Giants offensive line plays better, if Eli kind of hones it in, figures out how, how he used to throw the football, and I know we say this every week, we say it every year, but I think the Giants are going to be really good on offense anyway. And I think they'll come away beating the Cowboys narrowly because we can never have a an easy victory if you're a Giants fan. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Giants never get easy wins. Everything always comes down to the wire. And especially against a really, really bad team like the Cowboys, uh, it's going to take a it's gonna take a job. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I am willing the Giants to a victory on Sunday night football. Next up, Monday, September 17th, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ESPN. It'll be the Seattle Seahawks at the Khalil Max. And uh, I feel like the Khalil Max are a really good team on defense, but the Max aren't the greatest offensive team, specifically Mitchell Trubisky blowing the largest lead the Max have had against the Packers since 1948. So that's pretty terrible. Um, the lack of ball movement on offense for the Max has been a really glaring issue, uh, especially in that second half last week. They just didn't look good at all on either side of the ball. But the uh, the Khalil Max defense, I think, is a really good unit. I think that they will get better, and I think the Khalil Max defensive star Khalil Mack will look as good as he did last week again against the Seahawks team that doesn't have a great offensive line. They uh, might be without Doug Baldwin. Russell Wilson is their team at this juncture, and if he keeps getting hit, if if he keeps getting old, which everyone does, then the Seahawks will be irrelevant within the next two years. 
<laughs> they really will. They'll be bottom of the barrel. Russell Wilson's the only reason that um, that they still uh, cling on to any hopes for playoffs. But I think that Khalil Max will come out and get a great victory on Monday Night Football. They go from Sunday Night Football to Monday Night Football. And I think that extra day will give the Khalil Max the edge they need to beat the Seattle Seahawks. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it for week one. All right, what? That was last week. That's it for week two predictions. And I hope to catch you guys back here again next week for week three predictions. Hopefully I don't call those ones week two. Uh, let's not try to get confused around here. But that'll do it for me, guys. It's been fun. It's been a ride. This video half the length of the other one from last week. So I hope that you guys enjoy that. I know I did. My voice does. And I'm going to go drink some something so I can help alleviate the pain I'm in right now. So yeah, that's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo. And I will catch you all next week. Enjoy a great weekend and Monday night of football. Because I know I will. And I will catch you guys next week for week three predictions in the NFL.